Hi and welcome to this video about user management. I'm Valentin Zickner and in this part of the user management videos, I'm going to show you how you can integrate OAuth 2. To get started, I will actually base that video on the video about LDAP. So I have uh, already started the application from the LDAP video where we can sign in uh, just with our LDAP credentials, chain Doe and password test basically over here. We see that we have two contacts, Jane and uh, uh, John. Jane is an admin user. And when we sign out and then sign in, it's John Doe. And we will see that this is just a reporting user with a little bit functionality in there. Uh, from a uh, project point of view, I also uh, went ahead and basically used the same project. You don't need to use a development project for what I'm doing right now. You can but I would like to show you basically the additional things which you need to do when you have your own development project. But I would al will also mention uh, the properties which you for your customization or for your project without a customization. I already went ahead here and basically upgraded to version 3.13 uh, in my project over here. And I also went ahead in the Docker Compose file and that key cloak, since key cloak will be our server, which is providing us um, open ID, uh, basically uh, connectivity. So we will sign in at key cloak, and then this will redirect us uh, uh, back to the global application. So that is our open ID connect authorization server, while uh, flowable itself is going to be the server uh, where we are, or the application where we are going to sign into. Now, to get started, we will actually configure Keycloak first, and after that, we will configure Global itself. So you can skip basically the first part in case you have either Keycloak already up and running, or in case you are going ahead and waiting with something else. You only then need to see how you can create your client at the end. Right now, I don't have uh, in here uh, realm for what we are going to need. So I will create, first of all, uh, from scratch, a flowable realm. So that is basically um, our uh, application uh, context, which we are going to use in sense of flowable. And in there, I am going to configure uh, my LDAP uh, that we can basically use that. And I don't have an active directory, so I just go for other here. I have my LDAP running uh, on the server open LDAP port 389. Um, uh, since it's all localhost, I haven't configured any uh, TLS and so on. You obviously would like to do that in case you are running it um, in the internet or in your network, uh, just that you have encryption there. Uh, my uh, bind DN is actually the one which I used also for a global integration uh, that also gives us uh, the user DN over here. Uh, we say for now that it is read only, but honestly, that is really up to your key clock configuration then at the end if you would like to have right. My username attribute is CN, same actually for the RDN LDAP attribute. And then uh, we last but not least also need to define that we are going to trust the email addresses from the LDAP since otherwise the user would need to verify them and I wouldn't like to do that. Now in that we can uh, configure our mappers and the default mappers are quite good but not all of them are good yet for the username. Uh, we actually would like to have CN, so that is also correct. And for the first name, we would like to have uh, the given name here as well. So both of them are correct since this time I started with a correct uh, integration from the beginning. And now I can uh, sync all my users and we see that we added two users uh, successfully. Now looking at the list of users, we now should see here that we have Jane Doe, which is Jane Doe at flowable.com. Last name is Doe, last name is Jane, and same for John Doe. So we have now 
all users basically in here and we can start creating the client. Now, up until this point, nothing was basically about Flowable. It was only how we can get our LDAP users into the key cloak. You could have created also new users in your key cloak when you would like to use key cloak without uh, Flowable. Then you also need to map all additional attributes uh, basically here in uh, key cloak. Let's create a new client. And the client is basically now the point where we configure how Flowable is going to use our key cloak. I'm going to create a new client and the client ID is going to be Flowable work. Um, with that, uh, we are good here. And we say client authentication is on. In this case, we need to specify the client uh, credentials inside our configuration. Now in here, we also need to configure then the redirect URL that is localhost 8080 slash login slash auth2 slash code slash flowable dash work. Um, uh, that is basically a login auth code is uh, typically for Spring Boot, while flowable work uh, is uh, going to be the name of the uh, server, how we are going to call it inside our application properties later on. Uh, for the post redirect URL, we are just going uh, post logout redirect URL, we are just going to specify localhost 8080. And uh, we are then fine over here. And that basically gives us uh, already the basic configuration. And later on, we are going to uh, need this client uh, secret, which we have over here. But therefore, we first go uh, to our code and adapt our code. To do that, actually, I am going to uh, use the documentation that I don't need to write all the properties. And from there, you can also configure those. So inside developer, then backend, developer guide security, we have a section about worth 2 And in there, we have, first of all, the dependencies which we can use. So those we can uh, basically add to our POM file, uh, which we have inside our project. So maybe here below the LDAP one, I'm going to add the OAuth2 one. For now, I'm going to configure my OAuth2 uh, client without uh, JWT. Uh, so I just need to have the first dependency. You can also add the second dependency as well. And then I am going to take the security configuration. Both of that you don't need to do when you are using our out-of-the-box images. I quickly need to import all the different classes in here. Uh, IntelliJ is recommending here the default imports, uh, which I can use. So it should be quite quick to actually do that. And now I want to variable here. So it's a little bit too fast. This one. As well, I'd like to have spring, but actually that line we can also remove in a second since we are not going to configure uh, the bureau token for now. So you either can comment that out or remove it for now, but we would like to configure uh, the logout. So we can say here logout and logout URL that's left auth slash logout. And then in addition to that, we also would like to have an um, basically callback handler. And that can be done with an object provider for the ORDC client lockout success handler. There we go. And just that here, actually it's only one, so we just name it singular. And if available, we would like to add this one to logout and this is going to be our logout success handler. So that is how we can configure this one. That one here defines basically the endpoint on which we are going to have the logout endpoint. And this one here um, is basically that our open ID connect. So our OAuth2 uh, will let our OAuth server also know that we are going to log out. Otherwise, when you don't configure this, you are going to see the uh, logout endpoint. 
All of that is actually done for you when you are using the out of the box images. So you don't need to have this file there at all. Since we have now two security configurations, I'm simply going ahead and removing the basic authentication. You can also use profiles, basically decide which of both are supposed to be used. And we can now go ahead and configure um, basically how our key cloak is connected. There you will also find inside our documentation an overview um, on how that can look like and that you will find in how to. And then we have uh, somewhere here on the left an um, OAuth uh, with Keycloak guide. So uh, set up flow with OAuth 2.0 and Keycloak. And there I will just uh, click on login for Flowable Works since that is what we are working on and take those properties uh, from here and add them to my configuration. Now, the first property in this list I technically don't need since I have a customization project that is only applied when you are using our out of the box images. And um, that's also the reason why I'm going to leave it in here for now. So it's important that you set this attribute when you are using the out of the box images. Otherwise, it's not going to use a key clock when you build your customization project. You don't need to have it at all. Then the client ID is actually also what I picked before. We now need to adapt the client secret to what we have uh, in uh, Flowable so, or in Keycloak. So we uh, just copy that one here and then uh, we are going to paste it here instead of the secret which we have had before. The author authorization grant type is the correct one and all the other things actually for my local environment are also how they are supposed to be. When I now go ahead and start that, um, we will have the basic uh, login functionality with uh, our key cloak configured behind it. So uh, once we started, we will basically see that we are now able to sign in. However, there's one thing which we haven't configured yet, and that is basically how we are going to retrieve information about that user and also our logout uh, configuration is not completely done yet since we haven't specified here our logout uh, redirect URL which we would like to have. So let's first try it out and see basically what happens with that configuration until now since we should be already able to sign in uh, to Flowable Work with uh, key clock. So whenever we hit now localhost 8080, where we have uh, global up and running, uh, we are able to uh, get redirected actually to our key clock. So now we are at key clock and we can sign in here with Jane Doe, for example, and use the password test. Uh, once that sign is, is complete, we are redirected to global work. But as of now, we see basically that uh, we don't have um, any permissions. And when I go to IDM API account user, we also see that we just have the basic information here. You might want to recall how that looks like well, since after I configure it, that it is going to use, uh, for example, our identity server, we will see that we have way more information in there, including, for example, our group and our user definition mapping. So let's go back and uh, enable that it is supposed to look up our groups just from our um, LDAP, uh, which obviously will then do some uh, LDAP requests in the backend. But uh, in case your LDAP is slow, um, you might want to rethink that. For me, LDAP is quite fast, so uh, that is a good possibility. And here I can uh, specify uh, load authorities from identity service, and that is supposed to be true. And I can sign in to different users. I am also going ahead and uh, specifying that I have a um, post logout redirect URL, which is going to be localhost 80, uh, 80 actually. So it's redirecting back to my initial login page. And with that, I have the possibility to sign them in again. So it signs me out in the uh, background uh, 
from Keycloak as well. So it will directly redirect me to Keycloak as soon as I am trying to basically um, sign, uh, sign out. So with that, I have uh, basically possibility to easily switch between the users uh, whenever I do uh, sign in. Now, when I refresh over here, I potentially uh, will be signed in directly right away since I have uh, still my valid token. We see we have now here a menu on the left side and that uh, works quite well. It was initially on the 404 page since I have had that still in my URL. And when I now go to current user, we see that we have the member groups in here, which are coming from my LDAP, as well as the type that I'm a super admin and my user definition key, which is user admin. So all that information which was missing before is now there as well. And when I go back and say I would like to uh, sign out and then sign in as John Doe, the password test, I see um, similar here. I have now reports by default since that is just a reporting user. That user doesn't see that much more. And I can basically then uh, sign out again and sign in as uh, Doe as well. So as you can see, basically, it's not that much configuration what you need to get started with LDAP. That allows you to sign in uh, with your user credentials to LDAP and use basically that global work application with single sign-on. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.